Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome you all to this session. I am Dr. Shiku, Neonatologist, EMS Hospital, Pirindalmana. Our topic for today's session is high flow nasal cannula oxygen. Let's have a look at what are the objectives of today's topic. Um, we'll go through terminology, current practice, introduction to high flow nasal cannula, mechanism of action, know your machine, initiation, continuation, and weaning from high flow nasal cannula. Coming to some of the terminologies used in this topic, the first one is NIV or non invasive ventilation. To know what is non-invasive ventilation, we should know uh, invasive ventilation first. Invasive ventilation is a mode of ventilation which is given through any kind of invasive procedure like uh, endotracheal intubation and giving the ventilation through the ET tube or through tracheostomy tube. This is called a non-invasive ventilation. And either, when we ventilate uh, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube use it on down in the invasive ventilation and other in the carnum with an invasive procedure. Namaka one of only other Namaka could be intubated, you know, other link in the tracheostomy tube which intubate you. So both of them is an invasive procedure. So it is called invasive, invasive ventilation. Now any ventilation given to a baby without the use of uh, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube is called non-invasive ventilation. Uh, endotracheal tube or the link tracheostomy tube you see other could be ventilated in the non-invasive ventilation and the other. As other normally the Kodukunda non-invasive ventilation Kodukunda. Uh, facial mask or other lingular nasal prongs or other lingular nasal cannula you see the one down. So this is not an invasive procedure. So this is called non-invasive ventilation. Um, um, the another uh, example on CPAP machine, uh, giving CPAP machine and uh, the other one is high flow nasal cannula oxygen. And then I will discuss here. And the term on CPAP, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. Uh, continuous Positive Airway Pressure is a mode of non-invasive ventilation. Non-invasive ventilation and then Manasalai. So this is a mode of non-invasive ventilation where the ventilation is given by delivering positive airway, uh, positive airway pressure continuously to keep the airway and the alveoli open. Preventing preventing the airway and the alveoli from collapsing. Uh, usually during inspiration, there is a tendency for the airway to collapse, and also there, there is a tendency for the alveoli to collapse. So by giving continuous pressure, we can keep the airway as well as the alveoli open. This is called continuous positive airway pressure ventilation. So CPAP ventilation through the uh, uh, Non-invasive ventilation through CPAP. So now we can look at what is high flow oxygen and low flow oxygen. Oxygen can, can be administered to a baby uh, at uh, different uh, different speed. Um, uh, to call it as a low flow oxygen, the uh, speed of giving or the flow the flow of the oxygen should be less than two liter usually it will be less than one liter and uh, to call it as a high flow oxygen the mm, flow rate of the oxygen should be more than two liter thing anything more than two liter is called high flow oxygen and anything more than one less than one liter is called low flow oxygen now we will have a look at what is the current practice in neonatology there is certainly a shift from invasive to non-invasive ventilation because invasive ventilation is associated with many complications. 
നമുക്കറിയാം ഇൻവേസി വെന്റിലേഷൻ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ നമ്മൾ വെന്റിലേഷൻ ഷുഡ് ബി ഗിവൺ ത്രൂ ദ ട്രക്കിയ ബൈ ഇൻഡിബേറ്റിംഗ് ദ ബേബി ഇൻഡിബേഷൻ ഇറ്റ്സെൽഫ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ടു ദി ട്രക്കിയ ഇഞ്ചുറി ടു ദ ഫാരിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ടു ദ ലാൻഡ് ഇ ടി ട്യൂബ് ട്രക്കിയിലൂടെ ഇൻട്രഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് ഡയറക്റ്റ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ട്രക്കിയക്കും അതുപോലെ ഫാരിങ്സിനും ലെങ്ങിനും ഉണ്ടാവാൻ സാധ്യത വളരെ കൂടുതലാണ് കൂടാതെ പ്രഷർ സപ്പോർട്ട് കൊടുത്തു തുടങ്ങുമ്പോൾ ദുറിൽ ബി ഇൻഫ്ലേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഡീഫ്ലേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി അൾവിയോടെ ദി ഓൾട്ടർനേറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻഫ്ലേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഡീഫ്ലേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി അൾവിയോലെ ക്യാൻ കോസ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ടു ദ അൾവിയോലെ കാരണം അൾവിയോലസ് വികസി വികസിക്കുകയും അതിനുശേഷം സങ്കോചിക്കുകയുമാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഈ ഈ വികസ് അൾവിയോലസ് വികസിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഓവർ ഡിസ്റ്റൻഡഡ് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ സങ്കോചിക്കുമ്പോൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അൾവിയോലസ് ഡീഫ്ലേറ്റഡ് ആകുമ്പോൾ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ഗോ ഗോ ടു സീറോ ലെവൽ സോ കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി കൊളാപ്സ് ചെയ്ത അൾവിയോലസിനെ വീണ്ടും ഡിസ്റ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ പ്രഷർ സപ്പോർട്ട് പ്രഷർ സപ്പോർട്ട് വെച്ചിട്ട് ഡിസ്റ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ദിസ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് വെന്റിലേറ്റർ ഇൻഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ലങ് ഇഞ്ചുറി അതുപോലെ പ്രസൻസ് ഓഫ് ഇ ടി ട്യൂബ് ഇൻസൈഡ് ദ ട്രക്കിയ ഓർ ഇൻസൈഡ് ദ ലങ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ആൾവേസ് എ ഫോക്കസ് ഫോർ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ദിസ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ടു ദ ലങ് leading to uh, ventilated associated pneumonia otherwise called wap all these uh, including the uh, ventilator induced lung injury as well as uh, ventilator associated pneumonia uh, it is damaging to the uh, developing lung this will uh, this is progressive and it can lead to condition called bronchopulmonary dysplasia which is otherwise called chronic lung disease e complications okay invasive invasive ventilation ullad kondu namukku invasive ventilation kariyinathra olivaakunnadana nalladhu provided that namukku cpap il allengil continuous post airway pressure il allengane inflate cheythu nirthikkondu ventilation ventilation വെന്റിലേഷൻ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അതായിരിക്കും ഏറ്റവും നല്ലത് സോ ദാറ്റ് വി ക്യാൻ അവോയ്ഡ് ദി ഇഞ്ചുറീസ് ആൾറെഡി മെൻഷൻ അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് മെക്കാനിക്കൽ വെന്റിലേഷൻ സോ നോ ദ ട്രെൻഡ് ഈസ് ഏർലി യൂസ് ഓഫ് സി പാപ്പ് ഈദർ ഇമ്മീഡിയറ്റ്ലി ഓർ ആഫ്റ്റർ സർഫക്റ്റൻറ്റ് ഇൻഡിബേറ്റ് ഗ്യൂ സർഫക്റ്റൻറ്റ് ദെൻ എക്സ്ഡിബേറ്റ് ഓർ വാട്ട് വി കോൾ ഇറ്റ് എസ് ഇൻഷുവർ തെറപ്പി അനദർ അനദർ another uh, thing is that the limitation of oxygen exposure decrease um, um, avoiding injury to the lung by the over excess of the oxygen de- decreasing um, bronchopulmonary dysplasia it will also reduce the incidence of uh, retinopathy prematurity uh, coming to next slide avoidance of intubation and increased use of nasal cpap has become primary mode of therapy in preterm neonates because of the complications associated with intubation and mechanical ventilation um, people has started moving more and more towards non invasive way of ventilation and nasal cpap has become the um, primary mode of uh, ventilation in a and at all see nowadays especially in preterm neonates adayade namukku ariyam ventilator or intubation and mechanical ventilation it is always better to avoid because uh, ventilator associated lung injury ventilator associated pneumonia Uh, other complications like intraventricular hemorrhage idellam koodal mechanical ventilation le ventilate cheyna kutigalla allengi neonates la adagonde enne clinicians started moving more towards uh, non invasive way of ventilation namaku available aayittulla non invasive mode of ventilation 
uh, it was only nasal CPAP. Uh, so nasal CPAP has become the primary mode of therapy in the last one or two decades, especially in preterm units. Uh, but uh, there are complications. There are problems. Uh, uh, the main problem is poor tolerance. The poor tolerance uh, just because the nasal CPAP in the e tubings in the bank are bulky and heavy. So it is applied to the um, face and the head. So uh, baby will will not be very much comfortable. Um, Adhuvalathane, uh, a nasal prongs, or like a nasal cannula, which is applied to the nostril. The country to do nasal cannula, CPAP, uh, nasal cannula, uh, the, uh, the, the dictum, it should occupy the whole diameter of the, uh, diameter of the nostril. In this case, the correct CPAP pressure is uh, delivered to the lungs, so that the alveoli will be kept open. Just because, just because the cannula is frankly fitting, uh, there is always a chance for um, a nostril injury of the columella to the nasal septum and to the LNSA. So all sort of interface injury can occur. Adu matra la nursing care, nursing care, uh, illegal access to the nurses uh, is uh, very restricted and there should be a one-to-one -one nursing. So people started looking at other mode of modality of uh, non-invasive ventilation. So in the last uh, last uh, last decade, uh, high flow nasal cannula has come up. Uh, it can it can apply the positive distending pressure to the uh, to the lung and the airway without the above limitations. Here in high flow nasal cannula, the nasal cannula size will be only 50% of the nostril diameter so that there will be always a space around the cannula so that baby will be more comfortable and the chance of injury to the nostril, uh, as I said, to the columella or to the LNSA or to the nasal septum is markedly reduced. And the tubings are not very heavy or very bulky. Nasal cannula tubings are flexible. You can use it anyway. So you can care the baby. You can give the baby for KMC. You can do all the nursing and baby will be comfortable. So people around the world started using high flow nasal cannula increasingly and its popularity has increased. Chiriki uh, Paranyal, high flow nasal cannula is a beauty in which it is a comfort to the baby. Um, it is better tolerated by the baby and is the nasal injury is a lot of pain. Uh, in the last decade, HFNC has been used as an alternative to nasal CPAP and has even started replacing nasal CPAP because of various reasons. Nasal, uh, sorry, uh, HFNC ude um, popularity kulavari prathana karanam adin the ease of application, ease of maintenance uman. I flow nasal cannula ude tubing se Particularly, head to head, like face to application, we are not. That is the attached tool. That is the attached tool. Nasal cannula. One flexible item, like a tubing. That is very simple item. One sticky end, cheeky little bit of pick up. That is all. That is the nasal prongs. The nasal cannula is all the prongs. I think the size is comparing to nostril diameter. Um, it occupies only 50% of the diameter of the nostril. This cannula is snugly fitting. CPAP is very important. The application is very important. The interface is snugly fitting to the nostril. nostril. Whereas in uh, 
uh, I flew an SL cannula. The cannula size, since the cannula size is very less, I mean uh, uh, only 50%, uh, it is very comfortable for the baby and the chance of injury to the uh, nose is very less comparing to CPAP. More than that, popularity could not be matter because of the reason, uh, ease of access to baby care is uh, another reason. That uh, uh, is the feeding is very easy. That is the KMC care is very easy. There are reasons for HFNC has got somewhat similar efficacy to CPAP in terms of delivering the positive airway pressure. So it is not only that to deliver the uh, CPAP pressure, it also it is also very comfortable to the baby as well as the caregiver. Now we will have a look at high flow nasal cannula oxygen in detail which is otherwise called heated and humidified high flow nasal cannula oxygen. Now let us see what is meant by high flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy. It refers to the administration of heated, humidified and blended air oxygen mixture through a nasal cannula at a flow rate higher than the inspiratory flow of the baby. This is a kind of non-invasive ventilation. Namakarina the bole either non-invasive ventilation, non-invasive ventilation and because uh, there is no intubation or tracheostomy uh, which is used to give the um, uh, respiratory gases to the baby. HFNC, high flow nasal cannula oxygen, high flow in the parayan karna, a mixture of air and oxygen is given at a higher rate, that is more than 1 liter per minute. That is why we have high flow in the parayan. Uh, high flow, uh, high flow, more than 1 liter per minute oxygen or, or air and oxygen mixture baby uh, that should be warmed and humidified. Otherwise, it can cause drying up of the secretions inside the airway and that can lead to respiratory problems. So the uh, air oxygen mix mixture what we are giving is warmed and humidified. Another thing is that it is uh, it is given through a nasal cannula uh, which is applied to the nose uh, but it occupies only 50% of the no nostril diameter. So it is so it is not strictly fitting or it is not forming a seal in the nostril and it is applied to a baby who is spontaneously breathing. So each and every word is important. Now, CPAP is high flow nasal cannula in Tamil Nadu. High flow oxygen is applied through a nasal cannula. And nasal cannula is doesn't occluding the nostril. In high flow nasal cannula oxygen, we talk about the flow rate, whereas in CPAP, we talk about the uh, pressure of the CPAP. This is the non invasive ventilation mode. Since both CPAP and uh, high flow nasal cannula is a Non-invasive mode of ventilation. It should it should be given only to babies who are breathing, breathing spontaneously. Spontaneous breathing is not allowed. mechanical ventilation. Now let us have a look at uh, what is the mechanism of action of high flow nasal cannula oxygen. It causes washing out of nasopharyngeal dead space resulting in effective elimination of CO2 from the nasopharyngeal space.
it provide positive distending pressure for lung recruitment positive distending pressure in the it is a kind of CPAP pressure only this pressure will be transmitted to the alveoli resulting in resulting in its recruitment thus helping the alveoli to keep uh, inflated helping in uh, proper ventilation of the alveoli it also help in reducing the nasopharyngeal resistance by splinting the airway and retraction of the nasopharynx during inspiration um, uh, so high flow nasal cannula oxygen because of its action at the nasopharynx causing washing out of the dead space and effectively eliminating CO2 uh, CO2 elimination effective way to not because of the positive distending pressure CPAP pressure that will be transmitted to the alveolus and alveolus will be kept open uh, so that helping in ventilation then it also leads to um, nasopharyngeal space cellular resistance for a cancer high so that respiration will be easier now we will move to the next slide it also causes uh, reduction in metabolic work since we are using conditioned warmed and humidified gas suppose number um, warmed and humidified gas there will be lot of temperature loss from the airway into the environment by the airflow so there will be uh, market energy loss so in high flow since we are using the conditioned gas there will not be any temperature loss temperature loss airway uh, secretions dried up because we are using uh, warmed and humidified gas which is warmed up to 37 degree that is uh, equivalent to the body temperature so the conductance and compliance will be better leading to smooth respiration Chiriki Paranyal high flow nasal cannula oxygen um, respiration Padarubatile uh, uh, respiratory support uh, in the mechanism of action Padarubatilana. That effectively eliminate the uh, CO2 from the nasopharynx by washing out the dead space, dead space uh, in the nasopharynx. It also reduces the nasopharyngeal resistance leading to uh, smooth uh, respiration because uh, it is a conditioned gas which we are giving uh, the compliance and conductance will be better for the baby resulting in uh, uh, better respiration better, better and smooth respiration and also uh, it reduces the uh, temperature loss or the energy loss from the airway to the environment these are the uh, uh, various mechanisms by which uh, high flow uh, high flow uh, influence the respiration of the baby now we can see the hfnc delivery system and uh, how does it works at the end of this session, we will watch a video explaining how the HFNC system works and how the HFNC unit is the disinfection of the HFNC unit. Now we will move to the next slide. This is how the whole HFNC delivery system looks like. Let us have a look at uh, different parts of the delivery system this is the main part of the HFNC delivery system this is a fissure and vehicle air 2 
HFNC delivery system. It has got an integrated flow generator inside the system. It can deliver gases at a speed of 2 to 8 liter per minute. Now you can see a humidifier here. It has got a heated plate underneath this. heated plate under. And this humidifier chamber contains the water. This water is maintained at a constant level by a automatic uh, by a supply from the bag, and it get, gets automatically filled. Now you can see the two ports coming out of the humidified chamber humidifier. Now you can see the oxygen from the flow meter is attached to the back of the RO2 system. And there is also another slit here at the back of the RO2 system with a filter inside through which air is sucked in by a quiet motor. This motor uh, this motor, uh, this this air and oxygen get uh, blended here or mixed here appropriately. And it comes, this blended air comes through the system and it uh, enters here and comes through this port into the humidifier chamber. Now the now the blended uh, air oxygen mixture gets heated up here and it is converted into water vapor and delivered through this port into the breathing tube. And the temperature of the gas mixture will be 37 degrees centigrade at the time it reaches here and this warmed humidified gas is supplied through the breathing tube and it reaches here and it maintains the same temperature at 37 degrees centigrade by the time it reaches here as well because inside the breathing tube there is a heated wire that maintains the temperature now the breathing tube the breathing tube is attached to a, a flexible cannula here. You can see this is called optifernasal cannula. It has got two prongs at the end of it. The beauty of this cannula is it is very light, it is very flexible, and you can see it is very nicely. Uh, the prongs are going into the nostril. You can see it is very nicely, uh, nicely uh, stuck to the cheek here and you can see the space around the cannula that means this cannula occupies only less than 50 percent of the nostril diameter so once the on and off switch is here once this on and off switch is switched on uh, the <coughs> flow generator is activated it generates it uh, uh, it deliver uh, oxygen and air mixture at a speed of 2 to 8 liter per minute which is blended here then it goes through this port into the humidifier here uh, there is a heater plate as I said earlier and it get uh, it uh, it heats up the water and the water vapor is produced and the humidifier and this warmed and uh, humidified gas is delivered through the pot here into the breathing tube maintaining the temperature up till here uh, keeping the temperature at 37 degrees centigrade that is equivalent to the body temperature delivering the warmed and humidified gas at a rate of 2 to 8 liter into the baby's nostril that's the way it works
you can see the error to HFNC system separately now. This is the humidifier and this is the error to system with the integrated flow generator. We will move to the next slide. Now you can see the different parts of the Airbo2 system separately. This is the main system with the integrated flow, flow generator inside. You can see the heating plate to warm up the humidifier. This is the humidifier. You can see the two ports here. These two ports will be attached to these two ports. And the breathing tube, you can see the end of the breathing tube that will go here to this port. Now you can see the OptiFlow nasal cannula. What are flexible items? cannula and the tubing on it. These are the two prongs. The other type is type of new council preterm cannula and term cannula. It occupies only 50% of the diameter of the nostril. Now you can see the wiglet, wiggle pad, not wiglet, wiggle pad here. Uh, with a sticker under the topological sticker remove the cannula can be fixed like this horizontally with uh, giving a space between the column and the uh, <coughs> and the bridge of the cannula. Just look at the baby, how comfortable the baby is. This is because uh, we don't have a very heavy and bulky tubing here or uh, we don't have a cap here, head cap here. So baby will be very comfortable. And more than that, this cannula is occupies only 50% of the space of the nose. That gives, uh, gives a lot of... Uh, a lot of comfort to the baby and more than that uh, the flow generator and the airway tool the flow generator it is a quiet motor it never produces any sound at all you can't hear the sound so in all this way it is peace of mind to the baby it is very comfortable to the baby and uh, the nursing staff they are very happy they are comfortable and the mother to to feed the baby and to give the KMC care the mother is also very happy so it is a very beautiful system now we will move to the next slide as I said earlier there are two types of newborn cannula one for the premature baby and another one for the uh, term baby now you can see how it is applied the wiggle pad in the end of the pedicure and the side load is stretchy and see that there is a space between the column and the bridge of the uh, bridge of the cannula then stick to the cheeks by removing the sticker from the from underneath very easy within few seconds you can do that what are the indications for using high flow nasal cannula high flow nasal cannula the common indication is it is used as a post extubation weaning mode. Ventilator support baby in direct height after extubation direct height the high flow and acyl cannula mata unodana. Idana valare common itula indication for uh, uh, for indication for high flow and acyl cannula. Randamati indication in the uh, as a weaning mode to wean from nasal CPAP. Namukipo nasal CPAP in the uh, pattern 
പെട്ടെന്ന് വീൻ പെട്ടെന്ന് വീൻ ചെയ്തെടുക്കാൻ കഴിയില്ല എന്ന് തോന്നുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ഹൈഫ്ലോ നേസൽ കാൻഡലയിലോട്ട് മാറ്റാവുന്നതാണ് എസ്പെഷ്യലി ഇഫ് യു ആർ ആൻറ്റിസിപ്പേറ്റിംഗ് എനി സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് നേസൽ ഇഞ്ചുറി തേർഡ് ഇൻഡിക്കേഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് യൂസ്ഡ് ഏസ് എൻ ഓൾട്ടർനേറ്റീവ് ടു നേസൽ സി പാപ്പ് നേസൽ സി പാപ്പ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന മിക്ക സന്ദർഭങ്ങളിലും ആസ് എൻ ഓൾട്ടർ ഓൾട്ടർനേറ്റീവ് നമുക്ക് ഹൈഫ്ലോ നേസൽ കാനല ഉപയോഗിക്കാവുന്നതാണ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ആൾസോ ബി യൂസ്ഡ് ആസ് എ പ്രൈമറി മോഡ് ഇൻ മൈൽഡ് ടു മോഡറേറ്റ് റെസ്പിറ്റി ഡിസ്ട്രസ് സിൻഡ്രോം now we will move to the next slide what are the goals of uh, treating a pp with high flow nasal cannula our first aim should be or our first concern should be to limit the use of oxygen to the minimum ningalku ariyam oxygen in uh, uh, in excess is a toxin to the body especially to the developing system of the baby it is it uh, it releases oxygen free radicals and it it causes injury to uh, retina it can cause injury to the brain it can lead to uh, injury it, it can cause injury to the developing lung so it affects multiple systems so limiting the use of uh, oxygen to the minimum should be our first concern let's see how can we reduce the use of oxygen one way of doing that is uh, by giving appropriate uh, distending pressure or cpap pressure thus we can reduce the requirement of oxygen that way reducing the injury to many systems another another way of uh, reducing uh, oxygen Uh, oxygen free radical injuries to wean the baby at the right moment so that uh, exposure to oxygen will be reduced to the minimum and then of course avoid complication by uh, continuously monitoring the baby we'll see how to monitor the baby on nasal on nasal cpap in the coming slides now we will move to the next slide now let us see what should be the initial settings to get started with high flow nasal cannula for this we should know what is the target saturation as you know it is uh, 90 to 95 percent by keeping the saturation between 90 to 95 percent percentage you can um, minimize the adverse effects of hypoxia as well as the adverse effect of hyperoxia otherwise we call it as oxygen toxicity to achieve this we have got only two adjustments on hfnc one is the fio2 adjustment and the another one is the adjustment of the flow rate both you can increase or decrease according to the clinical condition of condition of the baby as well as the oxygen requirement it is a good idea to start with an fio2 fio2 of 21 to 25 percentage or if the baby is already weaned from mechanical and uh, uh, already weaned from mechanical ventilation you can start the same fio2 which uh, the baby required when the baby was uh, um, transferred to high flow nasal cannula so if the baby's fio2 requirement on ventilator was 25 percentage you can use 25 percentage on hfnc or if the um, fio2 requirement uh, was 30 percent you can you may use 30 percent as a starting fio2 coming to flow rate a flow rate of 4 liter per minute is a, a good number to start with and you can use the range 4 liter per minute to 6 liter per minute 
you can gradually increase the flow rate again depending on the uh, condition of the baby, clinical condition of the baby and the oxygen requirement of the baby whether the oxygen requirement is going up or going down depending on this depending on the weight of the baby we can make a rough estimation of the uh, flow rate if the baby's weight is between 1000 gram and 2000 gram you may start with a flow rate of 3 liter per minute between 2000 grams and 3000 grams you may start with 4 liter per minute uh, for a weight of 3 kg and above you may start with a flow rate of 5 liter per minute but all these should be based on the clinical condition of the baby that is uh, the work of breathing the perfusion of the baby and the oxygen requirement of the baby all these matters we will move to the next slide now let us see how we continue to monitor hypernasal cannula oxygen there are only two adjustments which we can make on hypernasal cannula one is FiO2 and the second is the flow rate of the blended gas which we are giving regarding FiO2 try to give the minimum FiO2 to keep a saturation in the target range that is between 90 and 95 percent regarding uh, flow rate let us see what are the recommendations for increasing flow rate you can increase the flow rate by 1 liter per minute at a time to a maximum of 8 liter per minute depending on the following following factors the first one is increased work of breathing work of breathing another one of this another chest drawing and like a chest retraction on if the chest retraction is increasing or the chest introing is increasing that is the time to increase the flow rate by at an increment of one liter per minute to a maximum of eight liter per minute another factor is increased FIO2 requirement more than 10 percent above the starting FIO2 then that is another another indication to increase the flow rate then if you have got uh, blood gas analysis in your unit you can use ABG or CBG to know what is the PCO2 PCO2 of the baby if the PCO2 is increased by more than 10 millimeter mercury above the baseline then that is another indication to increase the flow rate of the blended gas this moon factors are two important items work of breathing FIO2 requirement important based on this you can increase the based on this we can increase the flow rate uh, EABG or CBG available available uh, if even uh, you can have a rough estimation of what could be the uh, perfusion of the baby if you look at the perfusion of the baby if the perfusion is decreased that may that is a indirect indication of uh, acidosis it could be respiratory acidosis or it could be metabolic acidosis that's the time you can uh, you can try to get a CBG or ABG done so that uh, we can decide whether we need to increase the flow rate based on this criteria that is the PCO2 if the PCO2 is more than 10 millimeter of mercury above the baseline then you can increase the flow rate uh, a good range is between 4 liter to 6 liter per, liter per minute of uh, flow and you can go up to seven or eight but never go beyond eight liter per minute most of the babies will be uh, managed can be managed with the flow rate between four to six liter 
liter, liter oxygen per minute. Another thing is that uh, never delay in escalating the flow if it is indicated. And most important thing is change to CPAP if not improving or, uh, or even to ventilator if the baby is not improving. If the flow rate is increasing above 8 liter and if the baby is not improving, maybe you can directly change the baby to ventilator. Okay, move, we will move to the next slide. Either system, either equipment dialer, monitoring is very important. Monitoring is other night, equipment monitoring, baby monitoring, and in non invasive ventilation. There is always an interface. The interface will injury check here. I mean, all the guiding line is check here. Equipment in the checking line, but then I'm item humidifier temperature proper appropriate on it or poor it. Usually it is kept around 37 degrees centigrade. Then water level, water level, uh, correct level on a pull of the nor poor it. Uh, southern IT, um, other automated item fill either. Water level correct uh, correct maintain chain on in the level check here. We need the condensation on breathing tube in your little condensation and don't know. Condensation on the very near it can cause apnea to the baby. Then coming to monitoring of the baby, uh, vital functions like heart rate, saturation. Perfusion of the baby. Perfusion in the very more capillary refill time on an open central perfusion on the southern open. In a work of breathing, most important thing because uh, chest retraction and lingual chest introing, uh, undo, leo, whether it is increasing or decreasing, in the Ladine, as per the market, and the floor rate to put a work in the other, the other monetary. You can even use a silver man score for that. Then interface injury, high flow and SL cannula, uh, cannula, 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 what are the corona? In kilo, interface number, uh, always keep it dry and we should leave a space between the bridge of the cannula and the columella of the nose so that uh, the chance of injury will be very, very much reduced. Uh, these are the a few things to be uh, monitored. Now we'll move to the next slide. Now, if everything is going right, this is the time for us to take the baby off the high flow nasal cannula. This is what we call as the weaning process. Let us see what are the criteria for weaning. The baby should be stable for at least 12 to 24 hours. Stable and the one to basic there should not be any work of breathing. A lingala chest in rowing or chest retraction of unda and padilla, and the target saturation should be between 90 and 95 percentage. Now we know that there are only two adjustments on high flow nasal cannula one is to decrease the FiO2, and the second one is to decrease the flow rate. Once the baby is stable, as we discussed earlier, we will start reducing the FAO2 first before uh, decreasing the flow rate. And decrease the FAO2 every fourth hourly by a decrement of 5% guided by the target saturation and the work of breathing. Once the FIO2 is uh, less than 25%, that is the time for us to reduce the flow rate. The flow rate should be reduced by a decrement of uh, 1 liter per minute every 12 to 24 hourly. Once we reach a flow rate of uh, 2 liter per minute with a NFI2 requirement of uh, only 25%, that is the time for us uh, for us to take a decision to discontinue high flow nasal cannula. 
stability means uh, we are again talking about uh, achieving the target saturation and there should not be any work of breathing suppose the oxygen requirement is going up or if there is uh, increased work of breathing what we do is we will return to the previous setting and we will hold the weaning for further 24 to 48 hours then again we will gradually start reducing the FiO2 first then we will start reducing the flow rate that is the way we go ahead in go ahead for weaning the baby from high furnace to Canada now we will move to the next slide now let us see what are the benefits or what are the advantages of high flow nasal cannula the most important benefit is what you see here you just look at how the baby is smiling at you the baby is very comfortable it is easy to use and well tolerated by the baby another advantage of hfnc over cpap is that uh, there is better CO2 elimination because of the uh, dead space washed out by the respiratory gases which is warmed and humidified. Another advantage is the incidence of nasal trauma which is significantly lesser than uh, the incidence of nasal trauma in CPAP. Another advantage of HFNC is that it is as effective as CPAP but with lesser adverse effects like air leak and incidence of pneumothorax. Comparing to CPAP, HFNC incidence of air leak and incidence of pneumothorax is very important. We will discuss the first slide. Ningakariam HFNC Lula nasal prongs. It occupies only fifty percent of the nostril diameter. Adunda nasal prong in the nostril near daily, very gap under. Whereas in CPAP, the prongs in nostril it is snugly fitting on there is no gap between the prongs and the nostril. Actually, uh, HFNC is a prong, nasal prongs, nasal cannula, and a space. That is a safety mechanism. That is the excessive building up of the pressure, CPAP pressure on down board. Uh, the air can escape through the gap and it can bring down the, uh, that automatic, that naturally bring down the. Uh, pressure from building up, building up excessively. Probably, uh, probably a day could occur now. Pneumothorax in the incidence of HFNC in Korea when compared to CPAP. Now we can look at what is the potential disadvantages to HFNC therapy. Currently, there is no way of monitoring the end distending pressure. And therefore, there is a theoretical risk of lung over distension and pneumothorax in HFNC therapy. Namukariya, namal CPAP le, namal setti chayi na the CPAP pressure ana. Udar na iti bappel CPAP le, namal pressure setti na the four centimeter of water, five centimeter of water, six centimeter of water. Angine namuk ariyam, etri ana. Uh, whereas in HFNC, what we are setting is the flow rate. We pressure set the flow rate. This flow rate create an end distending pressure in the lung. We have to end distending pressure in the lung. We have to measure the mark. That's why people believe that there is a theoretical risk of pneumothorax in HFNC. One Cochrane review. Cochrane review is a research on a research methodology. Cochrane review is the incidence of 
pneumothorax in HFNC is lesser compared to CPAP and practically also the incidence of pneumothorax is lesser when compared to CPAP in our day-to-day -day practice. Now we will move to the next slide. Now let us have a look at what is the physiological effect of high flow nasal cannula in preterm infants. This is an original article uh, came in 2020 British Medical Journal. In conclusion it says high flow nasal cannula therapy produces clinically significant nasopharyngeal and expiratory pressure with large variability at higher flow rates. Highest pressures were observed in infants weighing, weighing less than 1000 grams. It also says the pressure generated in the nasopharyngeal, nasopharyngeal space and the airway depends on three factors. One is the flow rate, second one is the weight and third one is the mouth position, whether the mouth is opened or closed. So, if we are using high, high flow nasal cannula as a primary mode in preterm babies less than 1000 gram, it is better to start with lower, lower flow rate, somewhere around 3 liter per minute, and gradually increase the flow rate to 6 liter per minute. And it would be prudent not to not to go beyond six liter per minute, and certainly we should not go beyond seven and eight liter. The maximum maximum uh, flow rate uh, which we can allow for babies less than thousand gram is uh, less than eight eight liter per minute. What do you mean by failure of HFNC or high flow nasal cannula? And when do you declare that HFNC has failed? In the following condition, you will say the HFNC is a failure. Once the oxygen requirement has gone beyond 40%, when there is respiratory acidosis on blood gas, when there is recurrent apnea while on HFNC and increasing work of breathing or chest in drawing even after escalating flow rate to, to somewhere around 6 to 8 liter per minute. This is the time we need to switch, switch the uh, support from high flow nasal cannula to another mode of ventilation like mechanical ventilation or CPAP. Uh, what are the contraindications to HFNC therapy in the NOCA? Um, there are a few. Uh, the first one is air leak syndrome. Pneumothorax and pneumomediastin is a contraindication to HFNC application. Frequent or recurrent apnea, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, congenital, congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a contraindication to any sort of non invasive ventilation, CPAP and high flow nasal cannula. I like that. Because, as you know, because of the uh, uh, because of the air get into the intestine, since the intestine is inside the chest, it will cause. Uh, um, for, for the further compromise of the respiration. Then comes upper airway anomaly. This is also an absolute contraindication. And the last one is preterm babies less than 1000 gram. This is not an absolute contraindication, but uh, it is a relative contraindication. It is preferable not to use HFNC on babies less than 1000 grams. Uh, the reason being at higher flow rates, um, uh, around 6 to, 8, 6 to 8, 8 liters per minute flow rate, uh, there will be a wide variation of the end distending pressure which is created in the lung. So it is 
uh, HFNC, so HFNC is not a preferred uh, support uh, to babies less than one kilogram. Now we will see how we can carry out uh, disinfection of the unit. Do the usual cleaning of the hall system using a mild detergent or 70% alcohol. Then you have to do the high level disinfection using the red disinfection tube. There is a video at the end of this session explaining how to disinfect the hall HFNC delivery system. We can watch it at the end of this session. HFNC system clean chain the uh, you can see two chamber ports here. This is called the right-hand chamber port and this is called the left-hand chamber port. Uh, e chamber port is not clean. We need to clean all the other parts. Including this elbow. This is the breathing tube uh, end of the elbow. Outlet elbow. This is the outlet elbow. This is the breathing tube end. That means the breathing tube is going to be connected here. So this can either uh, namka or a spin stick and a spin stick which it uh, 70% alcohol which it clean clean by introducing the stick in into into this elbow. Now the whole system you can wipe wipe with 70% uh, uh, alcohol. Pradana waited the e bagat the cleaning not the third. Now let us see how can we do the high level disinfection of the unit. For this we have got a uh, red, red disinfection tube and a red filter which is available with the system. Disinfection tube in the uh, blue end. Blue end a breathing, uh, a breathing tube port load attached here. No? And in the red end, red end, the left chamber port load to connect here. No? Uh, right chamber port load to connect here. But left chamber port load to connect here. No? Here, one filter, a blue filter, no, one filter in the code available. No? That is here. No? Attached here. No? Uh, that should be introduced into the right chamber port. In the disinfection cycle, start the disinfection tube heat is the high level disinfection achieved. First system power supply plug here, power system to plug here. Then, then switch on the system. Once the uh, switch on system switch on, it will go through a will, um, go through calibration. Then it will uh, go through the cycle, the disinfection cycle, lasting for 55 minutes. The temperature at the breathing tube end of the outlet elbow will be that is here it will be 87 degrees centigrade once the disinfection cycle is over you can switch off the system after the disinfection disinfection of the unit you can keep the you can keep the unit in the store now it is ready for use This red tube is a high level disinfection UC in the tube. This is a blue filter. This is a right chamber port attached. Now we will move to the next slide. Take home message High flow nasal cannula is increasingly replacing nasal CPAP as an alternative because of its somewhat similar efficacy and more importantly its ease of application, ease of care, better tolerance and significantly decreased incidence of interface injury. 
in preterm babies less than 28 weeks and in extremely low birth weight babies it is not a preferred primary mode now in the next slide we will watch a video on hfnc functioning and disinfection of the hfnc system we'll move to the next slide oru high flow set cheynad enganeyannu nokkam adin avashyamaya accessories endokkeyannu nokkam o2 flow meter water bag optiflow nasal cannula tubing heated breathing tube nasogastric tube water chamber video il kaanuna fisher and pickel air vote device inde parts endokkeyannu nokkam integrated air vote stand pole mounting tray air vote device finger guard heated plate chamber ports heated breathing tube connection port audio pause button on off button up and down button mode button display oxygen inlet port power cord and connection filter cover ini enginaanu high flow set cheyanadu nokkam power cord connect cheyuga oxygen flow meter and humidifier connect cheyuga ini oxygen tubings flow meter il connect cheythu matte end high flow device il ulla ഓക്സിജൻ ഇൻലെറ്റിൽ കണക്ട് ചെയ്യുക നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഓ ടു ഹ്യൂമിഡിഫിക്കേഷൻ ആണ് അതിനുവേണ്ടി സ്റ്റെറൽ വാട്ടർ നിറച്ച ഒരു വാട്ടർ ബാഗ് സ്റ്റാൻഡിൽ ഹാങ് ചെയ്യുക ഫിംഗർ ഗാർഡ് പ്രസ് ചെയ്ത് ഹീറ്റർ പ്ലേറ്റിന് മുകളിലായി ഈ കാണുന്ന ചേംബർ പോട്ടിലോട്ട് വാട്ടർ ചേംബർ കറക്റ്റായി ഫിറ്റ് ചെയ്യുക അതിനുശേഷം ചേംബർ ട്യൂബ് വാട്ടർ ബാഗുമായി കണക്ട് ചെയ്യുക ഇനി ഈ കാണുന്ന വൈറ്റ് ഹീറ്റഡ് ബ്രീത്തിംഗ് ട്യൂബിലെ ബ്ലൂ പാർട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ലിഫ്റ്റ് ചെയ്ത് കണക്ഷൻ പോർട്ടിൽ കണക്ട് ചെയ്യുക ഈ ട്യൂബിൽ ഓൾറെഡി ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ പ്രോബ് ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് ബേബിക്ക് കൊടുക്കുന്ന ഓക്സിജന്റെ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്യപ്പെടും ഇനി ബേബിക്ക് സ്യൂട്ടബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഇന്റർഫേസ് ചൂസ് ചെയ്ത് ബ്രീത്തിംഗ് ട്യൂബിൽ കണക്ട് ചെയ്യുക സാധാരണയായി ഒപ്റ്റിഫ്ലോ നീസൽ ക്യാനുലയാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇനി പവർ ഓൺ ചെയ്തതിനു ശേഷം ഡിവൈസിൽ ഓൺ ഓഫ് ബട്ടൺ ഓൺ ചെയ്യുക ഇനി നമ്മൾ ഡിവൈസിന്റെ ഡിസിൻഫെക്ഷൻ സ്റ്റേറ്റസ് ചെക്ക് ചെയ്യണം ഡിസ്പ്ലേയിൽ ഗ്രീൻ ലൈറ്റ് ആണ് കാണുന്നതെങ്കിൽ ഡിവൈസ് ന്യൂ ബേബിക്ക് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ സേഫ് ആണ് ഡിവൈസിൽ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ഓൾറെഡി സെറ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടാവും ഇനി ബേബിയുടെ കണ്ടീഷൻ അനുസരിച്ച് ഫ്ലോയും ഒ ടു ലെവൽ അഡ്ജസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്ത് എഫ് ഐ ഒട്ടും സെറ്റ് ചെയ്യുക ഇനി ഇന്റർഫേസ് ബേബിക്ക് വെച്ചതിന് ശേഷം ഒരു ഓറോ ഗ്യാസ്ട്രിക് ട്യൂബ് ഇൻസേർട്ട് ചെയ്യുക ഹൈഫ്ലോയിൽ നമ്മൾ പ്രൊവൈഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഡ്രൈ ഒ ടു ആണ് ആ ഓക്സിജൻ ഈ ട്യൂബിംഗ്സ് വഴി ഓ ടു ഇൻലെറ്റ് പോർട്ടിലൂടെയും റൂം എയർ ഫിൽറ്റർ വഴിയും എൻ്റർ ചെയ്ത് ഇൻബിൽറ്റ് ബ്ലെൻഡറിൽ വെച്ച് മിക്സിംഗ് നടക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നു ശേഷം ഹ്യൂമിഡിഫൈ ചെയ്ത ഓക്സിജൻ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ പ്രോബ് ഉള്ള ഈ ട്യൂബിലൂടെ ഇന്റർഫേസ് വഴി ബേബിക്ക് ലഭിക്കുന്നു നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്ലീനിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡിസിൻഫെക്ഷൻ 
പ്രധാനമായും ക്ലീൻ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് റൈറ്റ് ചേമ്പർ പോട്ട് ആൻഡ് ബ്രീത്തിംഗ് ട്യൂബ് പോട്ടുമാണ് ലെഫ്റ്റ് ചേമ്പർ പോട്ട് ക്ലീൻ ചെയ്യാൻ പാടില്ല സ്പഞ്ച് സ്റ്റിക്ക് യൂസ് ചെയ്ത് പോട്ട്സ് ക്ലീൻ ചെയ്യുക ശേഷം ഒരു ഡിസ്പോസിബിൾ ക്ലോത്ത് യൂസ് ചെയ്ത് ഈ ഭാഗം ഡ്രൈ ആക്കുക ഡിസിൻഫെക്ഷന് വേണ്ടി ഡിസിൻഫെക്ഷൻ ട്യൂബ് ബ്രീത്തിംഗ് ട്യൂബ് പോട്ടുമായി കണക്ട് ചെയ്ത് മറ്റേ എന്റെ ലെഫ്റ്റ് ചേമ്പർ പോട്ടുമായി കണക്ട് ചെയ്ത് പവർ ഓൺ ചെയ്യുക ഡിവൈസ് ഓൺ ചെയ്ത് ഫിഫ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് ആണ് ഡിസിൻഫെക്ഷൻ ടൈം